Welcome to WMLT News. I'm Josh Kerboy. And I'm Marilyn McAuliffe. The gubernatorial election is only a few days away, and we are continuing our series on the candidates. Last week, we heard from Republican nominee Russ Weeks, and this week, David Burnside had a chance to catch up with incumbent Joe Manchin. After speaking with challenger Russ Weeks, we met up with Joe Manchin at a campaign event in Fayetteville. He gave us a message for West Virginia voters. Uh, we've done better in the last four years than we've ever done in the history of West Virginia. We were disciplined. Uh, we paid down debt. Uh, we uh, created a, a better economy. We created 23,000 new jobs. Uh, but there is so much more to do. We've got to raise our educational standards to where every person coming through the education system has a livable skill. That's our goal. And with that, we can continue to expand our economy. While on the campaign trail, Governor Manchin is always quick to point out past accomplishments. And I can put us up against anybody. I know that. And I think for far too long, West Virginians always, for some reason, did not have that positive feeling. It's positive now. Good things are happening. People are recognizing this. They know that we're doing well. And they know that, that this is a state to be reckoned with. And it's a wonderful state to live in. So I'm proud that we were able to bring business and labor together to put our partisan politics aside and move forward as West Virginians. We want to make sure that we're diversifying as long as we're riding the high of energy. If that energy market drops off, our revenues drop off, and we could be hurting. And I want to make sure that we minimize what any type of uh, hardship it would put on the people of West Virginia. Governor Manchin wanted to make it clear that all students in West Virginia would have an opportunity for an education. There should not be, and I don't want one student in West Virginia who desires to have additional education not to be able to receive it, and we'll make sure of that. In Fayetteville, reporting for WMLT, I'm David Burnside. Every election, many voters go to the polls without the ability to make an informed decision about the candidates. Concord students recently held a forum to give those undecided voters a chance to make an educated decision. We spoke with Dr. Corey Williams to see how the forum was structured. We'll start off with uh, a biography of the two candidates, then we'll give them information about where they stand on the issues. And then we'll talk about some of the commercials that have been put out, whether those are uh, true or false in their claims. And then we'll have two students get up, one for each candidate, and give a why I'm going to vote for McCain or why I'm going to vote for Obama. A controversial issue is at the classroom at Concord. Brian Arnold has more. For the first time in the school's history, Concord University is offering a class on handgun safety. Students who pass the class walk away with an hour of college credit and a certificate of completion for the NRA basic pistol course. I think this is actually one of the, the only place I know of that students get college credit for taking a, a handgun safety class. So, you know, we may, may be breaking new ground, I don't know, but it, it's is, a wonderful opportunity. Roberts said the class consists of both NRA-provided material and his own lessons. We will exceed the 10-hour requirements and uh, we're kind of uh, adding other additional safety components in or additional information about cartridges or different firearms types. With a class that utilizes actual handguns, safety is an obvious concern. But students shouldn't worry. All precautions are being taken to make sure the class remains safe. Concord Security makes sure all firearms in the class are unloaded and no live ammunition is allowed on campus. I realize a lot of people have a, a negative connotation with, with firearms, be they handguns or long guns and there's negative stereotypes associated with that. And uh, I'd be more than, uh, more than willing to have them enroll in this class, and I think that we'll, we'll change their perception. No matter how you stand on the issue of gun safety, the course's popularity cannot be denied. And just through the flyers and word of mouth, the class uh, filled up in three days. There's been so much demand that they had to add a second section, which will begin immediately after this one ends. For WMLT in Athens, I'm Brian Arnold. One of the marquee events of Homecoming Week is Lip Sync, where every group organization has a chance to perform. This year's theme was musicals. Arden Hamrick has more. Many student organizations gathered and prepared for the main event of Homecoming here at Concord, Lip Sync. Students worked hard to finely tune their dance moves to fit their favorite musicals. Samantha Derringer, a member of News Ada Chi, is one such student. It was a lot of time and a lot of like being creative and just trying to come up with something that you think people are going to love and something that's different. Excitement levels are always high at Lip Sync, which leaves students stampeding towards the fun. 
Well, I'm very, very excited. Otherwise, I wouldn't be wearing this. And I worked very hard. Otherwise, I wouldn't be wearing this. Um, I'm wearing heels. I'm wearing some sort of leotard. And uh, some things are uncomfortable here and there. But I'm really excited about what we're, what we're about to do. Um, we've been working on it for a while. We actually had uh, JD, one of our associates, uh, help with the dance. And uh, we're eternally grateful to him for that. So. The competition is always thick, but coming out on top this year was Muzai Fi and Sigma 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 in first. Arden Hamrick, WMLT News, Athens. Crowds pack every Concord homecoming to see both the game, the announcement of the winners for the homecoming week events, and the crowning of the homecoming king and queen. I really didn't know what to expect. I thought the competition, I thought it was, I figured it'd be close. <laughs> I think we were just kind of ourselves. We we both are RAs. Um, I'm one in Sarve, he's one in Waddell. Um, I'm on the soccer he's on the soccer team, and we're both in lots of organizations, and so I think we just kind of got him in. <laughs> This October marked the first annual Miss Concord University Relay for Life pageant, which was held in the main auditorium Friday, October 24th. Consisting of nine lovely contestants, each participant demonstrated a special talent, evening gown, and interview session. Local businesses in Athens donated various prize packages for the top three contestants, while various Concord faculty made up the panel of judges, which gave Miss Concord University more than just a crown. A lot of these girls have been affected by cancer personally and they just want to help out a good cause. And whoever wins Miss Relay will be the spokesperson for uh, Relay for Life at Concord. Christina Dillard was crowned the winner and the runner-ups were Paige Cook and Brittany Keys. Congrats to all participants. And it's time again for this week's Concord Minute. Here's John Meadows with the homecoming edition. Thanks, Marilee. Last weekend at Concord University, students and alumni got to celebrate a festive week on campus with all the activities such as a Velcro wall, mechanical surfing, bonfire, parade, lip sync, and sumo wrestling, as well as many other festivities. It was an eventful week, to say the least. This year, alcohol was allowed back into tailgating. Needless to say, there was plenty of entertainment for everyone. It's not quite sumo wrestling, but here at Concord, some freshmen are interested in starting a wrestling team. Concord has never had a wrestling team, and if all goes as planned, it will be one of the three schools in the West Virginia Intercollegiate Athletic Conference to have a wrestling team. The VISTA program is coming to Concord to work with the Bonner Scholar Program to establish a campus-wide community service center. Their hopes for this program are to help combat the effects of poverty on our community by linking the university's resources to the community's resources. The program will strive to bring faculty and staff with students and other communities for the cause. That's it for this week's Concord Minute, brought to you by the Concordian. Back to you, Marilee. Thanks, John. And now it's time for a break here on WMLT. Stay tuned to hear about a gathering of bridge jumpers. And other festivals around the area. Bridge Day 2008, the largest extreme sports event in the world, was held Saturday, October 18th in Fayette County, West Virginia. Hundreds of base jumpers and nearly 80,000 spectators attended this year's event. WMLT was there to experience it all and talk to a few of the jumpers. This is my ninth jump here. Uh, this is my second jump today, so I can't wait to get off this bridge. It's freezing. <laughs> First base jump ever. Yep. Oh, what was it like? It was awesome. It was scary, but it was awesome. How long have you been jumping? Since 1989. What's it like today? It's pretty good. It's starting, the wind's starting to pick up, but I've already got one, one jump, and I'll take it easy on this jump. Over the past two weekends, the Summers County community has celebrated the effect that the railways have had on their community. Railroad Days in Hinton is a festival of food, music, and trains. Angie Coons was there. I'm here at Railroad Days in Hinton, West Virginia, and despite the weather, everyone seems to be having a very good time. <laughs> Railroad Days got off to a great start this October. This year's festival had plenty of live music and performances by local groups. Sales included art, crafts, and of course good food. 
Well, this is the second weekend of railroad days. Uh, sales last week were better than this week. Of course, it was colder and rainy this morning. The streets remain crowded, even through the cold wind and the mild rain. Uh, well, my friend and I sell jewelry here at Railroad Days, and it's going pretty well. It's been a little cold, but this is everyone here says this is one of the best fairs that they sell at. Visitors came from all over to experience the memories of this historic town and its unforgettable past. In those days, you either raised it or caught it, or you took your milk or your butter and eggs to town and traded. Well, this is obviously the Hinton Train Days, the Railroad Festival, and these are my grandfather's photos. He worked for the railroad for 42 years. He worked down at the Roundhouse, and he took eight albums worth of photographs. Accidents, conductors, you name it, he's got it in there. And we've done this every year for a couple of years, so we really enjoy it. Model trains were displayed throughout buildings in the town along with pictures and antiques to remind everyone of the background of the railroads in Hinton. What a beautiful thought, I am thankful. It's concerning that great speck of earth. Reporting in Hinton, West Virginia, I'm Angie Coons. Beckley also had a festival of a different kind. Daniel Vineyards held their first annual fall festival. The event mirrored the spring festival held every June for the past 10 years. Sean Miser has more. Daniel Vineyards held its first ever fall festival last Saturday. The entertainment was highlighted by three local bands. Performers enjoyed the festival but did have some issue with the weather. It went well. It was very cold. Our hands got very cold, but we had a you know a good response. People seemed to like what we played, and we enjoyed playing anywhere that we anywhere that people will have us. Uh, that was a long set. It went. I think it went quite well. Crowd loved us. Uh, we were able to joke around real well and uh, it seemed like the crowd liked this. A little cool out here to start with, and then the sun came out, if you noticed. With the sounds of Southern West Virginia filling the background, the local artists weren't the only thing to taste at the Fall Festival. We've got three really good music groups that we've discovered, and uh, they've, they've done well. The crowd really appreciated them. The wineries, of course, all have good wine, and so we have a nice group of wineries that we can count on uh, providing good wine and good service. Attendance was down from the usual crowds at the Spring Festival, but patrons can still look forward to this event next year. I think we will, but we may have to have them a little bit earlier. It's a, it's a little chilly now and a little too late, I think, for a fall festival, but we're learning, so we'll, we'll have it. Sean Weiser, WMLT News, Beckley. Kids in Raleigh County got a jump start on the Halloween festivities early. The Incredible Hulk, Batman, and even a Power Ranger made an appearance. The children filed through Uptown Beckley to get some ghostly goodies. Tailgate Halloween started in the late 1980s by the Youth Museum in Beckley. We asked Leslie Baker what Tailgate Halloween was about. It's just kind of a great Halloween block party. and it you know, it's over and done with in one morning and one part of an afternoon, so it's a really good event. A safe alternative to door-to-door -door trick or treating. Started out, we had 20 vendors and we had 100 kids. This year, we have 50 vendors and we'll probably have six or 700 kids. That's all we have today. Tune in in two weeks for more WMLT. We'll leave you with footage from this week's homecoming events. Oh.